I love the look of Pottery Barn, but not the Pottery Barn prices. Today, I'm giving myself the ultimate test of recreating Pottery Barn home decor with thrifted items. First up, I'm going to Pottery Barn to see what new items they have. Now comes the hard part. Let's go thrifting. We're gonna be looking for affordable decor that we can transform into Pottery Barn dupes. We're in the thrift store now. I'm gonna start looking for those Pottery Barn dupes. I have my phone with all the things we found at Pottery Barn. So I found this glass etching technique that they did at Pottery Barn. So I'm over in the glassware section. I found two smaller hurricanes and I'm gonna try that technique out. So I just picked up these smaller glasses to do that frosted technique, but when I was over in this section, I found this really large hurricane glass for $6. I think I'm gonna get this one instead of the smaller glasses, and this is gonna create a really big piece for my living room. So I started by just cleaning up my jar and then I'm going to come in with some Mod Podge. This is a matte Mod Podge that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna put it towards the bottom of my glass, but you could put this up as high or as low as you like. I also did a scallop technique along the edge to give it like a nice finished look. Then I just sprinkled on the Epsom salt. Now I didn't want this to be completely coated, but I did a good covering all the way around. Now I felt like the piece in the store had a glisten to it. I'm gonna add in some glitter that I picked up at Michael's. I'm gonna let this dry overnight and then add in a candle I picked up from Ikea. Pottery Barn has a lot of stacked boxes that are kind of in like this faux leather finish. So I'm finding stuff at the thrift store. So we're gonna see if we can find something similar, maybe two boxes that we could paint and give that similar look. I really like this one. Yeah, those look nice together. This one's $4, this one's 10, which is a little high, but I think because it's wood, they're charging a little bit more. Okay, this little container might work perfectly instead of our wood container. I'm thinking that would actually stack better. Plus this container is only $3 and a lot easier to open, whereas this one is $10. So I think I'm gonna get these top two. I started by just removing the tags from my containers. Then I'll just wipe down the pieces, which is something I normally have to do once I buy anything from the thrift store. Next, I cut down two dowels that I could use as handles for the front. Now these were going to be faux handles so that they look similar to the ones on the Pottery Barn's website, but they're not gonna be functional. Now the dowel that I'm gonna put on the top is a little bit smaller than the one on the bottom. I then used a white leftover paint that I had to paint the dowels that I had cut. Then I'm gonna use gold rub and buff and my foam brush and I'll just paint that on the edges. My goal with all these Pottery Barn pieces is to try to make them closely resemble the items you would see in the store. So that was what I was going for here. So to be consistent with my colors, I sprayed both of the containers with a white flat spray paint. I did two coats on the bottom and then I flipped them over once they had a chance to dry and I did one coat on the inside. I believe I even had to maybe do a third coat when I shut it. 
Next, I'm going to hot glue and E6000 these dowels onto my box. I just tried to center them up the best that I could. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Comment the word of the day, which is Pottery Barn. This looks very Pottery Barn-esque. Oh my gosh. Okay, this dish, I think I saw something similar at Pottery Barn that was marble. I think this would be perfect to recreate that item. I have a really fun DIY technique for this next piece. So again, I'm going to start by removing all of the labels and the tape and cleaning it up. Next, I'm going to get a clean base. So I'm just going to spray paint the entire piece with a flat white spray paint and I'll do the outside and the inside. Now I'm going to give it a marble technique. So what you need to do for this is get a bucket of water. So next you're going to add in the secret ingredient, which is the sea glass spray paint. I use the one in the color ice. What you're gonna do is spray the spray paint on the top of the water. And this creates like a fun texture. Then you're going to dip the piece straight into the container and pull it straight up. This creates like a faux marble technique. You're going to continue to do this all around your piece till you get that entire marble look. Then before I do the lid, I'm just going to use a paper towel to take off the excess spray paint on the top of my water. I'll spray some additional in and then I'm going to dip my lid in. Now you can dip it in until you have the desired look that you're going for, but I think this turned out so cute. It definitely gives it the marble appearance. not very tall. Look at this big like wicker basket, probably for laundry, but could be for a plant or something else. So we all know that Pottery Barn has a lot of baskets. So I want to try to recreate a basket for you. I found this one and several of the baskets at Pottery Barn have leather handles. So I'm going to see if I can recreate this one with leather handles. <laughs> so with the basket, I'm going to remove all the tags. Next, I spray painted it with this ultra matte spray paint. Anytime you're spray painting wicker, you're gonna have to lay on the spray paint pretty thick. So I started with it upside down, then I flipped it over and did the front side, making sure I got into all of those grooves. Next, I'm gonna be using some Dollar Tree faux leather. They have this in their vinyl section. And I measured how long my existing handles are. I'm gonna draw a line straight across and cut out my leather. Then I'm going to wrap my leather around the handle and I want the pieces to go straight down. So I'm gonna do two of those pieces, one on each side. Then I'm just gonna simply use some hot glue to hold it in place. I'm going to bring the handles so that they go down as well. Now on the edges, I kind of rounded them with my scissors because that was a similar look to the Pottery Barn piece and I'll hot glue them to the bottom. I had gone to Michael's in search of some brads and I found this set of brads at Michael's. I was going to use them to push on the edges to mimic the look of the Pottery Barn piece, but I didn't like the tacks sticking through the other side. So I actually cut those off with my wire cutters and just hot glued them in place. And you'll repeat this step on the other side. If you guys love seeing my thrifting videos, consider following me on Instagram at Liz from McDIY. I post all of my shopping trips over there. We got to look at all these lampshades. Yeah. Okay, so we found a bunch of lampshades 
these straighter ones we saw a lot on Pottery Barn's website, but we couldn't find a good lamp so far to go with them, so maybe we'll find a lamp that'll work for those. At my thrift store, they have a ton of lamps. So we are gonna look at all these lamps and see if there's one that has a similar Pottery Barn shape that we could update. So you guys, the shape on this one's really great, but then it has this like floral detail. Now, normally I could move it to the back, but I can't do that here. So either I'd have to completely cover this. So I don't think this is gonna be the best option. And there's also a matching set. So that's really cool because sometimes at the thrift store, it's really hard to find a matching pair. So I always look for a pair if I can. All right, Liz has been staring at this lamp for a very long time. You guys, this is like a massive 80s lampshade, but the shape of it is so similar to a Pottery Barn style. It's made out of pottery, so I feel like the shape of this is perfect. I'm wondering if we take it a darker color, and it's got this little topper that's similar to ones that I've seen at Pottery Barn. The lampshade is like perfect, except for it's gross, and we need to paint it or do something to it. And to make it even better, I found two of these. So let's get these and try to make them into Pottery Barn lamps. You guys, I am most excited about this lamp and I cannot wait to show you this project. It turned out so great. I love it so much. So what I decided to do was use some drywall spackling because you can see there's all these indentions. I didn't want that look. I didn't feel like that was modern. So I just added spackling to every other, like I guess swirly line. And I wanted this rough texture because you guys know that is really in right now. Let that dry. This spackling usually dries up in a couple of hours. Then I wanted to paint it. So I'm going to be using this sample dark paint I have. I added in some black because I wanted it to be a little bit darker. And then to give me even more texture, I added in some baking soda. If you look at the Pottery Barn lamps, they are very rustic and have a lot of texture to them. And I just added black until I was happy with the color. Next, I'm just going to use a regular brush to paint this. I feel like using a brush where you can stipple it in does help so you can get into all the different areas. So I'm gonna do one coat over the entire piece. Once that completely dried, I wanted to do a lighter, thin coat that would give it a little bit of dimension. So I used some of that gray, added in some white paint and water. This gave me a much lighter look. So I'm going to wipe that on. And then I decided I needed a little bit more water there. So I added in some more water to my paint. And then once I add it on, you can see I'm immediately wiping it off with my paper towel. You may be thinking like, what does that do, Liz? It just gives that subtle look and dimension. But I have to tell you, the thing I'm most excited to show you guys is how I painted this lampshade. I've never painted a lampshade before, and I don't know why I haven't, because it worked out so well. So I'm gonna use a stippling brush, but honestly, you could probably use any brush. I found a white sample paint that I had. I added a little bit of water to it and mixed it up. I simply did two coats all over this lampshade. You can see this lampshade is dingy, it's old, it's like probably, I don't know, 40 years old, and it just needed some new life. It definitely needed two coats, so if you're gonna do this, do two coats, but this turned an old lampshade into a completely new lampshade. So if you have a lampshade at your house, try painting it. Honestly, this was so much easier than even recovering it with fabric. Now with the top piece, I'm going to paint that with the gray color, and then I'm gonna assemble my lamp back together. I don't know about you guys, but this DIY is probably my favorite. I feel like this is a great Pottery Barn dupe. So this has definitely been a challenge, finding items that I can make exact dupes for from Pottery Barn, because I've been trying to make everything pretty exact. So some of the things I think are gonna be more inspired, which is what I typically do, but I don't know, it's definitely been a challenge, so it's been fun.
One thing I was noticing is this vase right here. It's a little small, but the shape on it is perfect. That's the thing you wanna keep in mind is you can always paint or add spackling or anything like that to your vases. You really wanna look for a similar shape. So this one's priced at 450. If I can find a larger one, I'm gonna get it. If not, we might go with this one. I went over to a quiet area to kind of set up my vases. I love to do this at the thrift store. Now these are the three that I pulled up and I don't like them all together. I feel like these two have a very similar shape and I feel like they're gonna work well together. This one doesn't go, although it has these handles that you see in a lot of Pottery Barn furniture, I don't think it's our best option. So I think these two would be strong together. Once I removed all of the tags from these vases, the insides of them were pretty dirty, so I did go and rinse them out and get them all clean to start my project. Now I knew this was going to be several steps just because that vase did have several steps to it. So I started by using a dark brown color and I spray painted the bottoms of the vase like they were in the Pottery Barn one. Next, I needed to mimic that look of the blue, so I had another sample paint. You guys, I get a lot of sample paints. It's just easy and they're affordable and then I always have them if I need them. So I had this blue paint, it wasn't light enough, so I just mixed it with a baby blue color until it was the consistency that I liked. Then I'm gonna paint the inside of my jar and move to the outside. I went down so I had about maybe two and a half inches at the bottom. The next step was I had to do those drips and I knew this was going to be pretty tricky. So I added in some pouring medium. You can get this at Hobby Lobby. We use it in our paint pours. I added that to the blue paint and just mixed that together. I thought this would help make the paint a little drippier. I guess it's drippier a word, I don't think so. <laughs> I just added the paint along the edges and kind of let it do its, its work to just kind of drip down the edge. So I let that completely dry. If you look at the one from Pottery Barn, it has these cream flecks in it. So I was trying to mimic that look. So I had this cream paint pour paint. I added it to a spray bottle with some water. Well, I did a little test first. Then I sprayed it onto my vases and it was a little much, but I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna wipe it off and give just a subtle hint of texture to it. So it really didn't give me much, but you can kind of see after I wiped it, it has that subtle texture. So we all know that Pottery Barn sells a ton of baskets. I found this one. Love the shape of it and how flat it is. I definitely think I can make this one into a Pottery Barn dupe basket. What I like about this basket is it already came with a lid. Lid baskets can be rather expensive. Now this one, I didn't have a lot to do at all. All I had to do was figure out a way to remove the hardware, which wasn't that difficult. So I went in with my wire cutters and removed the top latches. There was also this side piece that I had to remove as well. And then from there, all I needed to do was clean it up. And I think it looks pretty similar to the Pottery Barn one. Pottery Barn has all these different like gold dishes and little trinket trays. I'm thinking this one might work perfectly. 
I have to tell you, doing these rub and buff pieces are probably some of my favorite DIYs to do. So after I cleaned this dish up, I went ahead and spray painted it with a matte black. I feel like that's the key to getting a really rich gold color is using a matte black spray paint as your base. So I spray painted the bottom and the top. Next, I'm going to use three different rub and buff colors. Now, if you get it in a pack of five, which that's usually what it comes with, you can use all of these colors. So I just put them out on my table and I go in with a foam brush and just start mixing and matching the colors. That is really the key giving yourself dimension with your colors. Now I wanted this to be covered in gold quite a bit. You just add it until you're happy with it. Now you're not gonna see much black coming through. I covered most of it, but that black does give it that rich gold look. So I would say if you do this project, consider spray painting it first with that black color. Now you can use these trays for so much in your home. I think I'm gonna put mine in my bathroom under my soap dish. So these are very similar. I saw something like this in like a black at Pottery Barn and then they had some brads along the edge. This is the perfect example to find the right shape and then use paint and other items to make it look like the Pottery Barn items in the store. I have to be honest with you guys, I thought this project was totally going to fail, but honestly, it turned out pretty good. So I started by cutting off the ribbons that were along the edges so I could just assess what I was working with. Now I knew my best method here would be to try to paint this to give it more of that dark brown texture. I'm gonna be using a matte brown paint. And then I'm gonna mix it with a black and baking soda to give it a really dark look. I usually add water to my paint mixture, so I'm going to do that as well. I'll start on the back side and just add a really thick coat of paint. Then I'll flip it over and do the same thing on the inside. I hot glued the edges and then used some paper clips to hold it in place. Once the glue dried, I took off the paper clips. I went to Michael's looking for brads for this piece and I couldn't find any large ones that I actually liked. And then I started looking around the basket that I just put together, you guys. It had the perfect brads to put on the edge. So I actually used some from my other thrifted project. I had to pull the brads off of the faux leather pieces and then I had to clip the sides of them and push them down so that I could just hot glue them in place. And then I hot glued a brad on either side where it's closed together. I know I've been saying this throughout the entire video, but it's so true. If you're able to find something at the thrift store that's the right shape, you can add paint to really transform it into whatever you want it to be. Let me know, what do you think? Did I do it? Did I recreate Pottery Barn items down in the comments? And I would love to know which of the dupes was your favorite. Make sure to try that project you've always wanted to try. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. I hope you subscribe because I wanna see you back here.